Callan Diggs here. Day two of living in this uh, 29 foot light by open range 252 FLR travel trailer. Um, I actually did some research yesterday and learned that it is 29 foot, so uh, probably an honest mistake by uh, the owner who's renting uh, this to me. But uh, I have to say that uh, it was quite comfy. You know, uh, the bedroom is spacious, uh, the bed was comfortable. And, um, you know, despite the fact that things are more compact, you know, if you want to watch, if you want to see the interior of the travel trailer, you can refer to the first video. Um, but being that it's more compact, it could be more convenient as to make things more accessible. But, uh, you know, so far I've been quite pleased. You know, uh, I, I've i always thought that maybe, hey, maybe I'll get like a 20, a 21 inch or a 23. 29 is, I think that's what I'm gonna shoot for. It's quite spacious for a travel trailer. Of course, you can't compare it to an apartment and I think what helps is that uh, it has a slide out. So if so, again referring to the last video, if you it, you know if seeing that slide out, it does make it bigger. It does give it a uh, kind of a better aesthetic to the overall space. Uh, without that without that slide out, then it basically becomes. A, you know a, a, a rectangle and where so since there wouldn't be no let's say dining area or entertainment area uh, it would just be the kitchen the bedroom then the bathroom and then somehow uh, this area probably uh, will have to be like a dinette and uh, that's actually that's actually typical uh, and many uh, travel trailers. Uh, the area where I'm sitting on where you saw the couch, uh, that would typically be a dinette area. And sometimes those dinette areas are able to convert into an extra bed. So, um, so but that's, but I'm really considering that. Uh, yesterday I was telling you um, about you know, I had a lithium battery in. Probably I'll show you again. I actually have it right here. See, this lithium battery. So I have an e-bike and I will show you in this video. But uh, this lithium battery uh, allows me, uh, gives it a, a, bit, a, bit, a bit more power as opposed to, you know, uh, Pedal, pedaling manually, you know, of course, there's many people who do that. I'm just gonna just, uh, <laughs> I'm actually cooking. Day in the life, right? <laughs> Day in the life. So I'm actually cooking right now, but I am going to continue to talk to you while I. Fill the pot with some more water. Put it on the stove here. Look at that. Such a fine multitask. Okay. And if I run out of water, if I run out of water again, then maybe that's my cue that it's time to go. <laughs> but um, let me sit back down. So yeah. Uh, so this lithium battery I use uh, for my e-bike. I have an electric bike and uh, pr it, was pr it was one of the cheapest on the market. And I will take the opportunity to show you when I go outside as well as I'll show you the outside of the travel trailer what this looks like. Uh, but I have to say that it's very convenient. Um, you know, many people, you know, have their cars and there's nothing wrong with you know having a car especially maybe if you're a person who has kids 
um, you know, a person who's going to be settled, you know, for a period of time. Um, you know, a person, maybe you're into the whole status element, you know, <laughs> maybe that's the way you pick up chicks or maybe that's the way you prove to other people that you're worthy of love and respect, you know, or maybe you live out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> which requires a car and there's no public transit. So, you know, there's most, multiple reasons, obviously, but, uh, at least in my case, being that I'm not at any place for too long. Uh, an e-bike I thought was probably the most practical. I now have two bikes. Um, someone did gifted me a road bike. Um, you know, it was they wasn't using it anymore, so they gifted it to me. But the problem was that once it started getting down to, you know, 20, 10, 7, you know... <laughs> There's only about so much you can do uh, with a road bike, you know, and especially, you know, if you don't have the energy, you know, and then you have to worry about traction because road bikes don't have the traction as mountain bikes have. Um, so I just decided to go ahead and get an uh, electric mountain bike. And uh, it has served me well. It has served me well. So while we're talk so since we're on a topic, uh, I'll probably, you know, let's probably take the next minute to go out and uh, check it out. But it's something I definitely recommend. Um, you don't have to pay a whole lot, you know. I, I, I did. You know, I'm minimalist. Uh, I, I try to be thrifty in everything. Because um, the philosophy that I embrace is that the more you cut your expenses the more you can save money and invest money. And the more you can do that, the less years you'll need to work in order to retire. You know, so a lot of people, they buy these, these maybe big ticket or maybe more expensive things or things they really can't afford, and then they end up working for the rest of their life. So, you know, the way I approach it is, you know, if I could be a minimalist and if I could be, you know, very smart, by my purchases being thrifty then essentially um i can retire you know at an early age you know uh, it, it won't be required to have millions and millions of dollars uh to uh you know retire you know essentially i can only have a fraction of that and still retire and uh this is actually an interesting lifestyle We're talking about you know full-time rvm because uh, I have been amazed about how little people are able to sustain themselves, you know, regarding how, you know, you know, you know, money per month. Uh, you know, for me, I like comfort, obviously, you know, I would never deprive myself to the point where I'm uncomfortable, which is why I stated in the first video that the priority was space, you know, um, the people who, uh, let's say, you know, you have this whole movement of van life, the people who live in vans. That, that's just not for me, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, I wouldn't try it, you know, cause you know, I'm open to trying things, but that's, I, I never, I never see that in the cars as a long-term type of lifestyle for me. Uh, you know, at least with this, at least with, at least with a travel trailer, something like this, 29 feet, uh, it's more comfortable, you know, I have a kitchen, I have a slide out, I have an entertainment area, I have a bed, I have a couch here, you know, I have a dining room table. It's it's much more comfortable. So uh, that's the philosophy that I will suggest that you embrace. You know, many people want to get out the rat race and if you want to reach the finish line, uh, I will suggest that, you know, um, instead of buy, instead of, you know, trying to impress people who don't care anyway, you know, you're trying to impress them, they're trying to impress you, or you're trying to impress them, they're not even worried about you, you know, or you're trying to ho hopefully get the attention. All you're doing is like, you're just satisfying these short-term feelings of euphoria. You know, you get that brand new car, or you get the, the different, another car or whatever, or you get a nice up condo, an apartment, and you feel good, you know, that, 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 that the feeling of pride, you know, comes up and, you know, you feel good for about, a few days 
but then after that you're back to where you are and then you know if you're financing things you have another load of responsibility so things that you have to consider you know i don't know where you're at in your life you know and i'm not going to judge uh, uh, but if anything is, if you want to reach the finish line, if you want to get out of this rat race or traditional lifestyle, dead end nine to five, living paycheck to paycheck, it's a philosophy that you definitely want to strongly consider. Okay. So let's go outside. I've, I've, I've talked long enough about that. We'll go outside, check out the outside of the trailer and e-bike. Give me a moment. Here in Western Colorado, so we did get quite quite about a quite a bit of snow, about seven inches. See, that's what I mean about the slide out. See, it actually slides out, but you can't drive like that. You can't drive like down a road. So that slide out goes in. Otherwise, you'll be <laughs> taking up more than one lane, as I stated before. And there's a tree blocking it, but that's essentially the rest of the tra of the, the trailer. Then we have here. This is the this is the e-bike that I was telling you about. Okay. I'll actually put a, a Amazon link in the description. I did get I did get it off of Amazon. <clears throat> I'll give you a close up. So, this is the control modulator, you know. So, essentially, you know, I will press this button to turn it on, and it has three settings: low, mid, and high. And th these are pedal assists, you know. So, I'll be pedaling, but I will get a boost from the battery. Okay, which which goes right here. So the battery I showed you earlier, it fits right here. You put it in, it clicks in, and then uh, you turn it on. And this is it, it does have a uh, it does have a lock here. So uh, once you lock the battery in, you need the key to unlock the battery. Okay. But this also has a full throttle setting. So the way it's kind of blacked out, if I press this negative button all the way down it will black out and then I can hit the throttle like a motorcycle and it will be fully electric so that's the light that's the horn and that's the gear shifter and this is another shifter as well and you know it's it's this is also the headlight here you know but overall, you know, this has been good to me. You know, um, it's definitely, it's definitely one, it's definitely one of the cheapest e-bikes you'll find on the market. You know, there. And then this is the, I would imagine the kind of the whole electrical system of the e-bike for the battery you know but uh but yeah now I want to come back inside and and finish talking to you because uh it's quite cold out there <laughs> and uh Hold on, let me get this thing close. I'm gonna put this put this right down. Hold on. Alright. 
Sorry about that. So yeah, here we go. Day in the life of a nomad. Uh, so, uh, so I was standing before. So I was standing before. I paid six hundred and twenty dollars for that e-bike. So I paid like five. No, I paid six hundred and forty dollars for that e-bike. So I paid uh, five eighty, and then I paid sixty dollars to have someone to put it together. Uh, it did have instructions, but the instructions are not very detailed. So I just had a, a bike shop to put it together for sixty bucks all together, six hundred and forty dollars. I'm gonna put the link uh, in the, uh, uh, put the Amazon link to the bike uh, in the description of this video, so you can check it out for you, for yourself. And um, considering that's the cheapest on the market, you can't expect a whole lot from it. I think it's that one and it's another one that's about the same price. But nevertheless, that's the only bike. I would say that's the cheapest bike where you get the best deal. There's another bike that was the same price, but it didn't have the full throttle. Where you can just not pedal at all and still uh, and still uh and still get and still uh be able to accelerate. That gets 15 miles on one charge. Now, that's 15 miles in ideal conditions. So let's say you so you will get 15 miles if the terrain is flat, if there's not freezing temperatures, and if you're not in stop and go traffic. So if considering all those three conditions, you can get um, 15 miles on one charge. Now, if you have if you have moderate inclines, if you have to stop and go, stop and go. If you if it's freezing temperatures, then you're not going to get that. And then you also have to consider, you know, if the battery is that, are you using full electric? Are you using high pedal assist, medium or low pedal assist? Full electric, you can get 15 miles on one charge in those ideal conditions. If you use high, if, if you use pedal assist, you can get, if you, if you use pedal assist, you can get more. Okay, so um, if you're using, you know, obviously if you're using low pedal assist, you want to get more in a medium. Using medium, you'll get more than high. If you use high pedal assist, you're still going to get more than using fully the fully electric mode. So uh, I would, you know, as Nomad, uh, I think it's very useful. I will recommend it, uh, especially, you know, for someone who is considering this lifestyle. You know, it's, it's something simple as in where they can just tie it to the back of their truck or tie it to the back of the trailer or put it inside the trailer while they're traveling. Uh, domestically, it's a great investment. Definitely a great investment, especially if a person is going to be considering things like uh, BML, BLM land or uh, natural, national forest land. And that's something we could talk about in the next video. This video is quite long myself. And it took like at least three minutes trying to, <laughs> you know, doing cooking and trying to close the doors and all that stuff but hey you know that's, you know you're getting the opportunity to experience a day in my life but nevertheless um, I recommend that you consider getting an e-bike if you are also a strongly considering this type of nomadic lifestyle so I'll leave it there reaching the finish line .com. You know, and it's my sincere intention to help you reach your finish line. And if you want to stay, uh, camera shaking a little bit, pardon me with that. And if you want to stay here on YouTube, you can be sure to subscribe and you'll always be notified of my new videos. But until next time, I hope you're reaching your finish line.